Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at a comprehensive example of a statement of cash flows, which is similar to a CPA simulation. This topic is covered in introductory accounting, intermediate accounting, and definitely the CPA exam, the FAR section heavily covered. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all my courses, including many CPA questions. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, subscribe. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. Share the wealth, connect with me on Insta Instagram. On my website, you will find additional resources such as true, false, multiple choice exercises such as this one. Plenty of resources to help you pass the CPA exam. Add those 10 to 15 points to get through and put the exam behind you and focus on your career. If you'd like to see the prerequisite, the explanation for the statement of cash flow, please check the description because in this session, I'm going to be working an exercise and I'm constantly going to tell you this is what we learned. This is what we learned in the prior sessions. So if you want to learn a little bit more, go to the description to go to the playlist. And this is the example that we're going to be working with. We have Fortin Company. We have their current year income statement. They have a profit. Uh, we have the comparative balance sheet, two-year balance sheet. And in, in addition to that, we have additional information. For the, for the year, all sales were on credit sales. All credit sales to account receivable re reflect cash receipts from customers or purchases of inventory are on credit. All debit to accounts payable reflect cash payment for inventory. Other expenses are paid in advance and are initially debited to prepaid expense. So they told us what happened, you know, which what account affects what account. So what's required of us here is to prepare a statement of cash flow. We have the income statement, balance sheet, and additional information. The best way to 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 uh, to look at this is to, you know, use use my OneNote application so I can point and highlight what I need to highlight. First, we need to complete the operating section. And by the way, I'm using the indirect method, not the direct method. We'll use the direct method. We'll learn about the direct method in a separate recording. So what are the steps in preparing the statement of cash flow operating section? Remember, I broke that section into five categories. So operating section, what are those five categories? One, start with net income or net loss. In this situation, we have a net income. Two, add, add non-cash expenses, such as depreciation, amortization, bad debt expense. Three, add losses. Four, deduct gains. And five, you have to analyze current assets and current liabilities. If current assets go up, it means your cash flow went down. If your current assets went down, it means your cash flow went up. They work in the opposite direction. For your current liabilities, if your current liabilities went up, your cash flow went up. If your current liabilities went up, your cash flow, I'm sorry, if your current liabilities went down, your cash flow went down as well. So those are the five steps. Let's go ahead and work on the five steps starting with net income and we are giving net income as 114,975 so we will start with net income at the end i will show you the you know officially how you would look at it but let's see it 114,975 and basically we are done with step one net income is done um, we're going to go to step two, add non-cash expenses. Now, how do you find the non-cash expenses? You will scan the income statement. You will scan the income statement to find out if you have any non-cash expenses. We have cost of goods sold, operating expenses. There you go, depreciation expense. We have depreciation expense of 20750 Well, what do we do with 20750 We are going to add depreciation expense of... 20,750. And basically, I'm done with step two. I added my non cash expenses. I don't have anything else. I have other gains and losses. I have a loss. If I have a loss, I will add the loss. So I have a loss plus a loss of 51, 
25. So I'm done with step three. Um, let me, I look at my income statement. I have no gain. I'm done with the gain. Now I need to analyze my current assets and current liabilities and make the appropriate adjustments, whether I need to add or subtract. Starting with account receivable, I look my my current year is 65810. My prior year is 50,628. If I take the difference, I see that account receivable increased by 15,185. That was an increase. Well, an increase means if account receivable went up, it means I did not collect enough money. I sold more on credit of 15,185. Therefore, it's a deduction. Well, I need to analyze my inventory. So I'm done with my account receivable. My inventory went from 251,800 to 275,656. Also, that's an increase of 23,856, 856. So if inventory went up, it means it's a negative cash flow of 23,856. So I'm done with inventory. My prepaid went from 18, 1875 to 1250. My prepaid went down by 625. Well, if the prepaid went down, if the prepaid went down, that's a positive to cash flow at 625. When the prepaid goes down, what does it mean? Well, doesn't have to be the prepaid, board, but specifically the prepaid, it's easy to explain this. When the prepaid goes down, it means I expensed, I expensed, I, I, I recorded accrued expenses from, from the prepaid. So I did not pay for the expenses this year, I paid for the expenses in, from the prior year. Mm -hmm. Simply put, when I debited my expenses, I credited my prepaid. That's why my prepaid went down. So my expenses went up, my prepaid went down. Versus if I debited my expenses and I credited cash, then my cash went down. So since I credit I credited the prepaid, I conserved my cash. I did not, I did not, I did not spend cash. So therefore, prepaid went down, cash goes up. And I think I'm done with all the current assets. So I analyzed all the current assets. Okay. Now let me look at my current liabilities. The only current liabilities I have is accounts payable. I could have this or many. It doesn't matter. Accounts payable went from 114,675 to 53,000. It went down. Daddy, it went down by... How do we get to the rainy day one? It went down the by 61,000. Yes, it went down by 61,534. What does it mean when you're when your liabilities go down. When your liabilities go down, so accounts payable went down, it means I had to pay off the liability, so I paid off 61,534. And I'm done with the operating section. Basically, I analyze my current assets, I analyze my current liabilities. Now I'm ready to determine whether I had a positive cash flow. Uh, I, ha I have to determine what whether I have a cash flow a, a plus or a minus so let me go ahead and net them out to find whether i have a plus or a minus one moment please and if i do my computation i see it's positive forty thousand nine hundred it means my cash my cash is positive forty thousand nine hundred versus a net income of 114,975. So simply put, my income statement shows 114,975, but in actuality, the cash was 40,900. Now, what could explain this huge difference? And by the way, accounts payable was a negative. What could explain that huge difference? Part of it is accounts payable. I made a huge payment on my accounts payable. I, 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 I paid I made a large payment on my accounts payable, which in turn reduced my cash. Okay, that's 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 the main reason. So I'm done with the operating section. I'm done with the operating section. The next section is the investing section. So when I'm looking at my investing section, I need to focus on my long-term assets, which are right up, oh, sorry, equipment right here. Equipment, and if I have any investments, I happen not to have any investments, therefore I don't have to worry about it. Now, always 
read the additional i skipped the additional information because i did not need them for i did not need them for this but let me let me let me read the additional information the loss on the cash sale equipment of 51 25 is in look at uh, point b point b we sold the machine costing 46875 with accumulated depreciation of 30125 for 11165 let's let's kind of re reconstruct what happened here so we have a we have a, we had an equipment with an original cost of 46875 and this equipment had accumulated depreciation related to it of 30000 125 so this is this is the asset that we got rid of now we were not told we actually we were told that we sold it at a loss okay and we are also told how much we sold it for but let's do this computation to find out exactly what was what was the book value to kind of confirm our our loss so 46,875 minus 30,125 the book value was 16,751 I think there's something wrong with the math let me do it again uh 75 not 76 so it's 16,750 16,750 was the book value we sold it for 11,000 so this was the book value the difference between the equipment and the accumulated depreciation we sold it for 11,625 this is the cash we received less than the book value of 5,125 so we know we kind of proved to ourselves that 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 sale was resulted in a resulted in a loss it's good to confirm yourself if you have time okay now also so this is this is one of the equipment also what we are told we purchase an equipment costing ninety-six thousand three seventy-five by paying thirty thousand dollar cash and signing a note. We purchased another equipment. So we simply put, from this equipment, we get rid of this equipment. When we get rid of this equipment, we had a positive cash. Okay, we had a positive cash of fifty-one twenty-five from the first piece of equipment. And the second and the second equipment so we had an equipment and we purchased that equipment for 96,375 however of this amount only 30,000 was cash and the remainder which 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 is the remainder um the remainder was a loan so all we care about is we paid cash of 30,000 okay so simply put it seems we accounted for all the activities actually sorry the uh, the cash for the sale was 11,625 the loss was 51 51 51 25 so cash was plus 11,625 for the sale of the first asset and for the second asset it was a minus of 30,000 30,000 so simply put if I want to complete my second section now I'm looking at the the second section this is now the investing investing section i had cash received from the sale and it was 11,625 cash paid for the uh, cash paid to purchase the asset cash paid for the equipment was plus i'm sorry cash paid is negative minus thirty thousand, and basically i accounted for everything now i you always want to double check yourself how do you double check yourself well you you look at your equipment account this is good to double check yourself and the beginning balance was 108 the ending balance was 157500 now what you want to do you want to plug in what what you were giving you were told you purchased an asset for 96375 96375 and you sold an asset with a book value with the with the cost of 46875 so it's always good to double check yourself make sure you accounted for everything let's see if we did account it for everything we started with 108 we added 96375 then we get rid of an asset of 46875 
and this is 157,500. We accounted for everything. So practically I can say I'm done with my investing section. And as a result, I, I paid. The difference is 18,375. 18,375. And that's what we called net cash used. So this is not cash used, not positive, it's negative. So for for uh, for the operating, we had a positive positive operating. For the investing, we had negative. Now we need to look. Now we need to work on the third section, and the third section obviously is financing. So let's take a look at the financing section. Financing. Don't worry, I'm going to show you the complete solution at the end. The financing section. What am I looking for? I'm looking at my notes. I I have a note here short-term note, long-term note, common stock, paid in capital, and retained earnings. Those are the accounts I need to analyze. In addition to that, I have to see if I have any additional notes. Well, we paid 50,125 cash to reduce our long-term notes payable. We borrowed 4,000 by signing a short-term note. We issued stocks for cash, that's easy and we declared and paid dividends. So let's take it step by step. Starting with short term note. With short term note, we went from 6,000, we went from 6,000 to 10,000. Notice we went from six to 10. Well, it means we increased by 4,000. We increased our short term notes by 4,000. What do we know about short term notes? Right here, D, it says, clearly it says, we borrowed $4,000 cash. So we're done with the short term note because you know, the, the numbers as well as the additional information confirm this. So cash borrowed on short term basis, borrowed short term plus 4,000. Now let's take a look at our long term notes. We know the prior balance was 48,750. The current balance is 65,000. So let's re restructure the T account for the long term note to see what we make sure we accounted for everything. We have notes payable. The beginning balance was 48,750. The ending balance was 65,000. We know that we paid 50,125 to reduce the note. It means we paid 50,125 to reduce the note. 125 to reduce the note. This was cash. So if you want to, we can go down right now and say paid long-term note, cash paid for long-term notes payable. We paid that much for long-term notes payable, 50,125. We know that we paid that. We, we already told in the problem and we need to re restructure the T account. Now, in addition to that, remember we purchased an asset we purchase a piece of equipment costing 96,000. We paid 30,000 and the remaining was borrowing. So let's see how much we borrowed, how much we borrowed. So the total amount of the equipment was 96,375. We paid $30,000 in cash. What's left is 66,375, 66,375. Let's see if we accounted for everything in the notes section. We started with 48,750. We added 66,375 to purchase the asset. Then we paid off 50,125 and we have 65,000. I accounted for everything. So I'm done with my notes. So I'm done with my short term notes and I'm done with my long term notes. Now I need to move to my common stock. My common stock went from 150, 150,250 to those two numbers together because when you issue stocks, you should also pay in capital. Let's see what we are told about the stocks. It's, it says we are we issued 2,500 shares at $20 per share. Well, let's see how much we should have received money. If we issue 2,500 shares times $20, the the stocks should increase by 50,000. Well, let's see, that, let's see if that's the case. What's 162? 750 plus 37,500, which is 2,000, 200,000, 250 minus 150, 250, 
that's 50,000. Excellent. So every, everything makes sense. It means I issued, I sold more stocks worth of 50,000 and I received cash. It's clearly here. You sold all the stocks and you received cash. Well, I can go down right here to my financing section and I can put down issued or sold stocks, whatever you want to say, or cash received, cash received from common stock. I'm just abbreviating cash received from common stocks and that's 50,000 plus. That's 50,000. So I'm done with my I'm done with my stocks. What's left is my retained earnings. What's left is my retained earnings. And let me analyze my retained earnings. I started with 120, 125, and I ended with 185. My net income right here, my net income was 114, 975. And I was told I paid dividend of 50,100, 50,000. 100. Well, let's see if, if, the, if, if this is the complete picture. If this is the complete picture, I'm practically done because I'm given everything. I just want to make sure it's correct. Let's see. I started my retained earning with 120, 125. I add my net income, 114,975. Then I deduct my dividend, 50,100. It's 185. Everything is accounted for. So simply put, my last component is cash paid for dividend and that's was 50,100 now I'm gonna net out my financing section they net out to negative this is negative they net, they net out to negative 46,225 so I got the third section now what I need to do is this I need to net all three sections I need to net the operating the financing and the investing all those three and the net if I net them all out there was a net decrease if I take those three figures and I net them out plus 40,900 minus 18,375 minus 46 that's a net decrease of 23,700 now I need to know what's my beginning cash my beginning cash let me see what's what's my beginning cash my beginning cash was 73500 my cash beginning 73500 so my cash went down by 23500 is that equal to 49800 let's see and that is equal to 49,800, everything works. So simply put, my cash went down by 23,500 because the prior year was 47. This is cash ending. My cash this year is 49,800 because last year I had 73,000. My cash went down. And the reason why my cash went down because of my financing and investing, especially my financing, I paid 46,000 and especially my dividend and my paying off my long-term note. That really hammered my cash so basically what I did is I went through the whole section now I want I want to show you the complete solution so this way you see what it looks like um, on the Excel sheet uh, not on the Excel sheet on the PowerPoint so this is what it looks like so this is the operating section financing investing we add it to the beginning cash we'll get to the ending cash and this was the net change 23,700 and in the in the disclosure you put down that you had the non-cash investing investing and financing activity and you put that information down now if you like this recording please like it if you want uh, if you want to have access to additional material please visit my website subscribe to the channel and if you're looking to get that extra 10 to 15 points on your CPA exam, I strongly suggest you check out my website for additional resources. You, you invest for your CPA once in your lifetime. Do it wisely. Good luck and stay safe during those, those coronavirus days.